whole. While we focus on actions to stop the spread of COVID-19, I want to remind you all that it is equally important that we raise up actions to help each other maintain wellness, well-being, and resilience. This applies to everyone, whether you are already vaccinated or waiting to be vaccinated. Please take care of yourself. If you have gotten out of your old welcome routines this past year, like so many of us have, try to get back to those things that make you feel better, give you meaning, and help you feel connected, even if virtually. Connect with people, take a walk, safely connect with a friend, connect or check in on a neighbor. While you make sure you are getting enough sleep, eating balanced and healthy meals, and get regular exercise. Doing these simple actions can make such a difference in how we feel and how we respond to stress. Take breaks from the news and social media. While it's good to be informed, hearing about the pandemic all day every day can be upsetting. Considering limiting the news to just a couple of times a day and disconnecting from screens for a while. We have other tips for improving well-being while staving, staying COVID-19 safe on our CDC website, which I invite you all to look at. Of course, do get vaccinated when the vaccine is available to you. Doing so opens up even more opportunities to connect safely in person with others in small gatherings. I continue to hear of so many uplifting stories about friends and families being able to reconnect after months or even a year apart once they are fully vaccinated. This is what we're all fighting for, meeting your new grandchild for the first time, hugging a friend, having dinner with another family. We will get there. We are getting there. We are getting there at roughly two and a half million vaccinations a day. And we're getting new evidence about the positive effects of these vaccines every single day. As I mentioned on Monday, we now see significant declines in emergency department visits among people over 65 as that age group has gotten vaccinated. Just yesterday, several studies were released from the New England Journal of Medicine describing substantial real world protection against COVID-19 among vaccinated healthcare workers who we know are at increased risk of exposure to the virus. These findings should be a jolt of hope for all of us and to serve as a catalyst for everyone to roll up their sleeves when the vaccine is available. As I've said many times before, getting schools open for in-person instruction safely and as quickly as possible is a top priority for CDC. And here again, we are starting to see results. I'm excited to report that we've heard from a number of school districts since our updated guidance was released last Friday, that they're now able to move forward with broader reopening as a result of our updated recommendations on physical distancing. At the same time, we've been working hard with our federal retail pharmacy program to vaccinate K-12 teachers, staff, and child care workers throughout the month of March. Our pharmacy partners now report they have vaccinated more than 1.3 million educators, staff, and child care workers. About 566,000 of those were just in the last week. This is substantial progress towards our goal of getting our teachers and school staff vaccinated by the end of March. If you haven't already been vaccinated, visit cdc.gov to learn how to make an appointment through our federal pharmacy program. Finally, I wanna share how excited I am to be joining the President, Vice President, First Lady, and Secretary Cardona, along with many K through 12 students, teachers, and staff at the Department of Education's National Safe School Reopening Summit this afternoon. During the summit, we will continue the important dialogue of school reopening and hear firsthand experience from school administrators, teachers, staff, and students about how they have been able to successfully get back to in-person learning. I look forward to learning from the participants and engaging with our educational partners in their critical work. Thank you. I'll now turn things over to Dr. Fauci. Thank you very much, Dr. Wilinski. Uh, I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes now talking about something that I introduced at a prior briefing, and that is the ultimate effectiveness of the vaccines that are being administered. As I had mentioned previously, we now have three EUA vaccines that have shown a high degree of efficacy in randomized placebo-controlled trials. Right now, as the weeks go by, we see more and more 
that not only are these vaccines efficacious, but in the community, they are extremely effective in preventing infection with SARS-CoV-2. And what I'm going to do over the next couple of minutes is to just present to you very briefly new data on the effectiveness of vaccination and healthcare workers in reports that came out yesterday online in the New England Journal of Medicine. Next slide. In this particular study of healthcare workers at employees at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, if you look at this graph, it is really quite impressive. What it looks at, at people who are not vaccinated, in which infection was seen in 234 of over 8,000 employees, and then going from left to right, the next bar are individuals who are partially vaccinated, 112 of 6,000. But look at the far right of the graph. For those who were fully vaccinated, the infection rate was extremely low. 0.05% infection rate among fully vaccinated employees, a real proof positive of the importance of vaccination. The next study was a study from California also in healthcare workers that showed among almost 15,000 workers who received their second dose of vaccine who were showing that infection was extremely rare, similar to the Dallas study with a 0.17% positivity. Next slide. And finally, again, on data we're getting from Israel in which healthcare workers were vaccinated, it was shown that even among a situation where the B117 variant, which we are concerned with, was noted in up to 80% of cases, there was a major reduction in new cases among individuals who have received two doses. So as Andy Slavitt said, now 70% of Americans 65 years of age or older have received at least one dose. And as Dr. Walensky said, every day, two and a half to three million people get vaccinated. So every day we get closer and closer to that extraordinary degree of effectiveness, which we're seeing at the community level. And at the end of the day, that is what it is that is going to end this pandemic in this country. Back to you, Andy.